the sun began to set. His eyes widened with fear. Minutes passed, seconds passed. Suddenly, the young boy who was only 11 years old hears footsteps coming up the stairs. His very first instinct is to hide, to run. The door slams open. In walks a tall, strong woman with a piercing brow and angry eyes and a sternful look. Matei, she says. What did I tell you, boy? Matei, hiding in the corner, shivering at the sight of his stepmother, tries to hide a little bit more. Suddenly, the woman puts out her tall, pointy finger and says, Come here, you. Tay slowly with his head down, walks up to her. She raises her hand. And all we know is that that night, the whole town heard the piercing screams as Matei was badly beaten by his stepmother. You see, Matei was a young boy living in Nigeria at the time. And in the town in which he lived, there was no actual well. They had to go to a town that was in the next village to get the water. And Matei's chore every morning and every night was to bring the water for his family. They could cook, they could clean. Every morning at 5 a.m., his stepmother would raise him up with a rod and say, Matei, go do your job. Give him a small bucket. It wasn't that small, it was probably half his size. Force him to go all the way to the other town and come back with a bucket full of water. This young boy. But they had step brothers and sisters. Thing was, none of them had to do as much work as Matei had to do. However, Matei never complained. I wonder why. So then, one morning, Matei wakes up. Early, a little bit earlier, they don't really want to be risen with the rod one more day. Picks up his bucket and walks towards the town. Once he gets to where the well was, he, he stoops down, he fills the bucket full of water, he walks out. On his way home, he notices old man sitting in the corner. The man looks at him with teary eyes and a painful look and, and begs him for a little bit of water. He said he didn't have the strength to go to the well by himself. He said he hadn't drank water in, in days and he was dying of thirst. Tay's heart was moved. The boy grabs a little bit of the water and gives him some water to drink and, get, and he continues walking. On his way home, he, he, had, he has to pass through a small village, a small street. And as he's passing through the village, he sees this woman with a bunch of children, and they're crying, and, and they're all just making a ton of noise, and this woman is in so much pain and suffering. And, and Matei sees this, and she sees that he's carrying water, and she says, Hey, boy, could I have some water? I need to make breakfast for my kids, but I can't leave them alone, and I can't take them with me to the well because it is too far a walk for them. So Matei's heart is moved again grabs some water from the bucket, and, and he gives it to these kids and, and to his mother. He continues walking home. And the story continually repeats itself on his way home, and then finally when he gets home, the bucket is half empty. And again, the story repeats itself. He takes the bucket, leaves it in the kitchen, goes up to his room, hides in a corner, awaiting the stepmother's response. 
And again, she storms up the stairs, walks into his room, points out her finger and says, come here, you. This was Matei's story day in and day out. Morning, night. And so finally, Matei said, this is enough. I'm done. I will never give water to anybody else again because I no longer want to suffer with my stepmother's hand. One afternoon, Tim realizes it's, it's time for, home, for him to go get more water. Picks up his bucket, goes to the village, and as he's walking, he's realizing that, strangely enough, there's nobody, at least none of the beggars that are usually waiting along, along the street to the village. There's nobody there. I just, this is a little strange where he doesn't pay much notice to it. Keeps walking, and walking. And the sun was beginning to set. He realized that he had to be home by sundown, and it's already getting late. He started getting a little bit afraid of what his stepmother might do to him. The sun begins to set. Here's the cool afternoon breeze blowing, getting rid of all the sand that was already on his body from the hard day's work. He gets to the well, dips in the bucket picks it out, stumbling to the side because, I mean, an 11-year-old boy, even though he did it every day, it was still a little bit heavy. He's walking, a little bent over, taking, making sure he does, that he doesn't spill a single bit. On his way home, he realizes a finger thrown on the floor up ahead. He didn't pay much attention to it, but he continued to walk. As he got closer, he realized that it was a man, mid-fifties, tall, well-shaped. You could tell that he was somebody sophisticated. However, his clothing didn't look like he was sophisticated. He was wearing funny blue clothing, almost like a uniform of sorts, but a uniform he had never seen before. When the man looked at him, Matei realized that he had a very severe cut running along his left shoulder. It would appear that this man was attacked by a wild beast, although Matei wasn't very sure what had actually occurred. The man looks at this boy and says, Help. Help. Matei. He immediately put the bucket down, went to this man, realized what he had to do, grabbed some water, cleaned his wound, gave him some water to drink, washed his hair, helped him stand up and brush his jacket. He actually took a piece of his shirt and tied his shirt, his, his uh, um, shoulder together and helped him to the next village. But by then, the bucket was halfway empty. So Matei gets home and he realizes, oh man, not again. Why did I do that? Why did I help that man? Why can't I help myself when I see somebody in need? And Matei drops the bucket in the kitchen, goes up to his room, awaiting the stepmother's response. Again, she storms into the room, points her finger at him and says, come here, boy. She grabs him by the ear, takes him downstairs. Why is it that every single time I send you to bring water, you always bring me half a bucket. Are you that weak? Can you not bring a full bucket? When I was a little girl, I was required to bring two buckets, and you can't even bring half a bucket. Matei is bracing himself. He knows what's coming. And as she raises her hand about to smack Matei into the next life,